Krishna, I'm very, very enthusiastic to give this particular lecture. Uh, it's the second part of our um, uh, series of lectures, which describes the two types of divine intervention. Mm. Intervention means that something from comes um, and enters our own little world and, and, and does something. And intervention is there can be military interventions, and, and all of a sudden a foreign country intervenes and, and, and changes the rules of the country. Uh, but there can be also divine intervention. We will uh, talk about this today. Um, I hope to say something which is uh, thought stimulating to you and which will help your spiritual life. I'm aware that this is uh, for many of us who plan their lives, the last day of uh, one year, there are other ways to plan one's life, for instance. With Kokonim or Jamashimi, you can, you can um, consider this a year, one Jamashimi to another Jamashimi, or one Kokonim to another Kokonim. But I think we all feel, because we participate, in the, in, to some way, in the culture which surrounds us, uh, particularly the mental culture. We participate in this and we feel, oh yes, uh, would be nice if I can find some inspirations for the next phase of my life, the next year. And uh, I would like to also start this on the 1st of January. Uh, first day of the calendar. So, so I'm trying to um, find some inspirations here at the Sangha Mela, which will help me. And my do hope that I will in some ways be able to satisfy this need which we all have. Um, the verse which we will take for today's lecture um, is here, chapter 4, chapter no, Canto 4, chapter 29, text uh, 51. It was the verse also of the first lecture. Mm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Iti Veda Savai Vitvan 
The spiritual master is described in every scripture as the representative of the Supreme Personality of God. The spiritual master is accepted as identical with the Supreme Personality of God because he is the most confidential servant of the Lord. Kintu Prabhuya Priya Evatasya. The purpose is that both the super soul and the individual soul are very dear to everyone. Everyone loves himself. <laughs> and when he becomes more advanced, he loves the super soul also. A person who is self realized does not recommend the worship of anyone else but the super soul. He knows that to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead is easier than to worship various demigods under the influence of lust and the desire for material enjoyment. The devotee is therefore always engaged in the loving devotional service of the Lord. Such a person is a true guru. In Padma Purana it is said, Sat karma nipuna, no, nipuno vipro mantra tantra vitalada. A Vaishnava Guru Nasyat Vaishnava Svapacho Guru. Even if a Brahmana is very learned in Vedic scriptures and knows the six occupational duties of a Brahmana, he cannot become a Guru or spiritual master unless he is a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, if one is born in a family of dog eaters, but is a pure devotee of the Lord, he can become a spiritual master. The conclusion is that one cannot become a spiritual master unless he is a pure devotee of the Lord. 
One who is a spiritual master in accordance with the above descriptions of devotional service is to be understood as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, personally present. According to the words mentioned here, Guru Harihi, consulting a bona fide spiritual master means consulting the Supreme Personality of Godhead personally. One should therefore take shelter of such a bona fide spiritual master. Success in life means accepting a spiritual master who knows Krishna as the only supreme beloved personality. One should worship such a confidential devotee of the Lord. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tenamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Prashtaya Nirvishesha Shunyari Paschatya Veshatame There's a secret uh, which in a way could be called a turning point which changes the entire <coughs> life of a, a soul. Turning point means in German ein Wendepunkt. When you come to a turning point in your life, then you cannot compare what your life was before you arrived there to what it becomes after you have come to the turning point. A turning point is really a <coughs> deciding moment in the life which, uh, as the word says, turns you uh, into a different direction. There are a few turning points in our lives. Mm. And this is 
a very significant one. It is said that one who comes to this turning point and can actually understand and, and, and actually go through this turning point, he becomes actually educated uh, to a degree that he can teach others um, uh, and become the spiritual master of the whole world. It is said, if you can come to this turning point, then um, you are representing Krishna in this world and you are not different from Krishna. This turning point is something which I would like to talk today uh, as we will go into the second type of mercy. Uh, in our first lecture we are, were thinking about the sweet mercy of Krishna. Uh, that sweet mercy is that someone who becomes a little <coughs> conscious of him gets in his heart a present, the present of bhakti, no? love for Krishna, which uh, changes his life in many ways. Mm -hmm. To have the sweet mercy of Krishna is uh, not even very difficult, uh, as the Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita. That you just uh, much chitta, you must fix your consciousness on Krishna, and then mm, you are capable to receive uh, this gift of bhakti so that you can cross over the difficulties of your life. Uh, I believe that many of us have accepted the path of Krishna consciousness because there was a moment in their life uh, that is the, the, the moment, the initial moment in their life where they really felt by practical experience uh, that uh, yes, uh, by mm, practicing Krishna consciousness, my life is is better than by not practicing it. Uh, maybe ten years ago, I watched an old film, German film, which had many interviews with devotees. And the interviewer had asked the devotees, mostly young devotees, uh, um, uh, uh, why have you adopted this foreign uh, culture and religion? And they all said, oh, I was unhappy before, I was suffering, and now, and you can see it in their eyes, the sparkling eyes. Uh, with the uh, sparkling with what we call philosophically Utsahamayi, the initial enthusiasm which the Lord gives. <coughs> and now I really, oh, it's really, I feel so happy and my doubts are clarified and so on. This is the initial investment of the Lord in every soul who becomes inclined towards Him. But then this bhakti, which has been given to a new person is still so much mixed with his own agendas, with, with, with his own uh, plans, with his own contaminations and uh, like gold which uh, is uh, alloyed with many impure metals Mm -hmm. uh, needs to be uh, smelted, smelted heißt, uh, so was wie geschmolzen, within fire. Krishna gives his second type of mercy, which is considered to be the bitter mercy by many devotees, uh, in order to purify that uh, initial investment of bhakti. So we will talk now about this second type of mercy. In order to start, I would like to uh, open my, uh, my lecture with a uh, schematic understanding of our situation in the world. My schemata will be uh, borrowed from G, you know, 
Geometry, we say in German. G G O Geo Geometry. Thank you. You know everything. Geometry. Mm. I didn't was not a very good uh, pupil of mathematics. <laughs> I, I read my 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 paper. You know, what is it called? A zeugnis. Certificate. Uh, certificate. When I left the school, it was not very very. Uh, Charitable, <laughs> uh, but something I remember. Uh, mm. In order to describe uh, the, the the world, geometry has made co a coordination system which allows it to understand mathematical formulas better and which is quite helpful. It, it has a, a line like this and a line like that. And there is uh, what is called the minus numbers, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it goes up to infinito, and then there is the plus numbers, um, 1, 2, 3, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here's the, the minus area. Mm. And here is the plus areas. And uh, when you advance very much in the minus number, you need a long way to approach point zero and then go into the initial plus numbers, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, and so on. It's very, very important. So I would like to use this shamata, shamata to explain a little bit material life and spiritual life. We are now in the minus in material life. We live in what is called a reflection of the spiritual reality uh, a type of illusion. Whatever we, we, we do uh, in this minus uh, world, we are increasing the, 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 the minus so I am maybe rich, then I'm minus one. But if I'm rich and beautiful, I'm minus two. And when I'm very educated, I'm minus three. <laughs> and take to it a good birth, uh, which in, in an aristocratic lineage, which uh, uh, just uh, makes me clearly distinct from the lower parts of society. <laughs> I'm minus four. <laughs> uh, 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 so. I'm increasing the minus numbers by, uh, uh, by making advancement in the material world without Krishna consciousness. You can make advancement and you can with Krishna consciousness. But if you forget the Lord and in fact you want to imitate him and you become more atheistic, whatever advancement you make, you really increase your minus situation. It's like increasing a fever. <laughs> if you have uh, 40, uh, the normal temperature, as far as I remember, please correct me, was 36.7. This is correct. Uh, so if I'm 38, it's a bigger number, but I have more fever. It's more dangerous. If I'm 39 degrees hot, oh, then it becomes a, a little dangerous. If I'm 40 degrees, wow. If I'm 41 or 42, I have to call the graveyard people and reserve a grave. Uh, so increasing the fever means increasing the danger. It's not good to increase the fever because it's something which happens in the, you could say, in the disadvantage minus um, area of my life. Um, only, so when I have a big fever, I need to really, I have a long way until I'm back to 36.7 degrees and, and, and then I can improve. So if I'm very much in the minus world, very much a sensual person, may, very much an enjoyer of the world, maybe very much a successful controller of the world, it becomes more difficult for me to enter the positive world because I'm removing myself more and more from the point of sanity, 
of spiritual uh, realization and spiritual advancement. Of course, it doesn't have to always be like this. I'm speaking of a situation where we are not Krishna conscious and become more attached to these things and increase our false ego. So Krishna sometimes sees that his devotees in the name of bhakti may increase only their false ego and uh, seeing that they inflate their wrong existence his special type of mercy is what we could call the deflation of the illusion you know the pinch yes it's a heavy subject i know <laughs> it's the needle in the air balloon of anakara it goes down and, and uh, it is painful because we seem to lose everything which we have worked for, which we have increased for. Relationships, uh, money, position, reputation, that goes very quick with the internet needle nowadays, uh, <laughs> and so on. It, it is a very quickly doing this. Mm. Now, uh, if you go back to our geometric example of geometry, uh, minus four is approaching the zero point. Then Krishna deflates our ego. So that now, from that point, where a devotee feels himself uh, 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 wretched and, and uh, abandoned, mm. Aufgegeben from God, um, you know, that he now can start his positive spiritual life in all seriousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the ego is the mother of all aparadhas. Aparadhas, you know, is translated into English as offense, but it means something much, much, much different than the English word. Apa means away from, and Radha means Shimati Radharani, the goddess of uh, Krishna worship. No? So, Apa Radhas come from the false ego, which happen, uh, when, uh, happens when the devotee has an impure type of bhakti. A bhakti where he is, has not understood that Krishna is in the center. Krishna is to be worshipped and remembered. But it's a bhakti where a little Krishna, but mostly me, 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 and my own thoughts. Am I clear so far? When we advance in the minus world, this can also be in the minus bhakti world. The, uh, the bhakti where we are dressed like devotees, do the activities of devotees, but have not come to the turning point, or you could say zero point. Zero point is a little, sounds a little frightening. Turning point, huh? um, where we understand that's the Lord who is in everyone. It's the Lord to be, who is to be worshipped. Uh, um, uh, a person who is self-realized does not recommend the worship of anyone but the super soul. He doesn't even recommend the worship of himself, <laughs> to be very clear. Um, so if he has come to that point where he understands it, some, or before he can come to this point, some deflation <laughs> is necessary. Some deflation of the force of Ahankara, the identification with material, position, name, fame, uh, <coughs> personal benefits, and talents, uh, good words, and so on. He has to come to the position of Dinata. Mm. Uh, 
Prabhupada speaks about this turning point, which is at, at the beginning there. He says, uh, when one feels unhappiness with his position in the world, <coughs> when one feels fear, that is, how will this go, how will I go on in this, and when one feels a sense of having offended the Lord, then all this comes together. One has a feeling of dinata. Dinata means uh, a feeling of being wretched. Wretched means not, not very talented. Uh, in christlichen Sprache ist das, man kommt zum Punkt der Zack, des Zerknirschtseins. Hare Krishna. Now, it is from this point where you lose your hope of being of, of, of trying to enjoy this world and trying to control this world, where you can enter the plus world, that is the world of Prema. From Dinata, feeling, uh, feeling as far as your material life is concerned, no longer any, any identification comes Prema forth. It's very strong, the goddess of love comes. Krishna, we are entering the positive. Uh, in our Vaishnav theology, you therefore always find great devotees lamenting, Oh, I am a lusty sinner. Uh, oh, I have not control over my mind. And, uh, and so on. The one who says this is the high court judge of the British Raj. He has the highest position. He earns so much money and has so much respect by the Britishers who ruled India. And his name is Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Huh? You know. This feeling of dinata, I'm feeling, uh, I, I don't want this material fever, I want to decrease the fever now, uh, marks a good devotee who's understood that the Lord alone is to be worshipped. It's, um, so, Raghunath Das Goswami, has given a work, uh, uh, a work called Manak Shiksha. It means instructions to the mind. He starts his work by, uh, oh mind, brother mind, I implore you, I beg you. This is something important now, which I want to tell you. Listen, listen to me. Our life will be finishing. Listen, give up all pride. Give up all pride. This ankara, which brings you to the and high numbers of the minus uh, life. Huh? Give up this. This is not good. And then he gives an example. As long as the dirty dog eating prostitute, have you ever seen a dirty dog eating prostitute? Most of you look away when you see such people, so you have not really seen them. Uh, you can see them in Albania. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as the dirty dog-eating prostitute of Pratishna dances in my heart, how will the delicate, pure-hearted heart goddess of prema enter my heart? Can you see the analogy? There's a lady, like all of you are very nice Vaishnav ladies. If you come to a place and you see a dirty dog eating, she might have the, the leg of a dog <laughs> and, and dancing. Oops! You will not enter this place. Not our Vaishnav ladies. <laughs> So, Raghunanda Goswami, Ray Goswami, is talking, giving this example, which makes us Hare Krishna devotees blush and faint if we just think about the, the graphic detail of what he says. It is dirty, dog eating, uh, Vishi, Vishi, I think it's called. Uh, uh, he said, This is the, the, the desire of, uh, of this is the child of Ahankara. The, the Pratishna, I want, I want to be in the center. I want, I want, I, I, I. 
it's called self-absorption and if it gets a, to a difficult point it's called narcissism it's uh, something which many spiritualists uh, who have not come to the turning point who are still with impure bhakti have this only and how do i feel how is this and how do i understand this and how we are mm -hmm. Self-absorption is a polite word. Let us say the good words in this lecture. Mm -hmm. As long as this is there, how will the, what is she? Delicate, delicate, Holy Krishna. pure-hearted, goddess of prema enter. How, how will this happen? So the Lord sees us in our plight. The misere Sachen in Deutsch, in our plight, our problem. And he therefore sends, after sending his sweet type of mercy, his bitter type of mercy. And we, if we are not uh, prepared for this, we will, we, will, we will not appreciate this mercy so much. And I will uh, tell you in a moment, and at that time my right hand will go up. Uh, tell you how you can start to see it from uh, the Lord's perspective. But I would like to give you now an example about the bitter type of mercy from Krishna book, where Krishna himself explains his process of de this deflating thing. It's on page two. Yes. 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 See, it is described for us sadhakas that when the gopis uh, were together with Krishna, uh, the, the Lord of the universe, they became pride, proud. Uh, other acharyas have described that this is not the pride of a conditioned soul, but uh, uh, Krishna's Leela has also uh, something for us conditioned souls. And uh, Krishna disappeared from the myth. He went, uh, he, was, he was no longer there. They felt really <coughs> abundant. You must know that they had given up their families, uh, their husbands, in the dead of the night. Any woman who would do that in that society would never be accepted back. When the wives of the Brahmanas uh, followed Krishna's call, or followed, uh, went for Krishna, and Krishna wanted to send him back, they said, we cannot go back. Everyone will give us the punishment which is given in our society. We will be killed. So the, the gopis had, had left, uh, placing all the, had left everything behind, placing all their hope on Krishna. But Krishna chose to disappear from them. Uh, the gopis were absolutely uh, 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 stricken with, with 
the pangs of separation. They first tried to find Krishna, hoping that they would find his hiding place, but when they were unsuccessful, they went to the banks of the Yamuna, uh, which were bathed in silvery moonlight, sat down and chanted his name. Then after some time, when they really called the, for the Lord, the Lord appeared to them. The compis had a question. Why? They sat him down, they surrounded him, made a nice sitting place, and then they said, Why did you do this? Why did you do this? Why did you give us this treatment <coughs> you called us? We gave up everything. And we, 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 went, we came into a, 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 a uh, you know, this is very dangerous for us. And, and what to speak of our hearts? We, we gave them to, our hearts to you, our only valuable property. And then you disappear. Why did you do this? Are you, do you have a problem with showing gratitude? Was there something wrong with you? They could not understand this behavior of the Lord. And the Lord now explains his, this type of mercy, the second type of mercy. My dear friends, said Krishna, you might be aggrieved by my words and by my acts. You might be really sorry by what I do. But you must know that sometimes I do not reciprocate my devotees' dealings with me. It appears that my devotees are very much attached to me. But sometimes I do not reciprocate their feelings properly in order to increase their love for me more and more. This is why I do it. If I can very easily be approached by them, they might think, oh, Krishna is so easily available. So sometimes I do not respond. If a person has no money, but after some time accumulates some wealth and then loses it all, he will think of the lost property 24 hours a day. Similarly, in order to increase the love of my devotees, sometimes I appear to be lost to them. But instead of forgetting me, they feel the loving sentiments for me increase. My dear friends, I do not think for a moment that I have been dealing with you just like ordinary parties. I know what you are. I know you have given up all kinds of social and religious obligations. I know you have given up all connections with your parents without caring for social convention and religious obligations. You have come to me and loved me. And I'm so much obliged to you that I cannot treat you as ordinary devotees. <clears throat> and then Krishna says something which is so beautiful. He says, do not think that I was ever away from you. I was near to you. So just see uh, now, mm. see this point now. The point is, from our perspective, the Lord has uh, no seems to no longer be so kind to us. He was so kind when he gave us the bhakti in the beginning. But if you switch now the perspective, this is the whole point here. If you switch the perfect per perspective and try to see the world from Krishna's perspective and try even to see yourself from Krishna's perspective, that you will see the following situation. He is an individual, that's you, who has bhakti, the sweet type of mercy which is given to you, but in the cause of bhakti, because 
you were not, not yet perfected. You developed, uh, you carried on with the self-absorption, uh, which is coming from Ahankara. No? The Lord, who wants to bring you to the kingdom of God and dance with you there, needs to bring you now to that turning point, zero point if you want to say with the geometrical example, mm, uh, and uh, needs to purify you. My dear devotees, this is known in all bona fide religions. The um, Christians speak of the dark night of the soul, and Rumi gives an Rumi Sufi master gives an example from housekeeping, and I want to go to housekeeping. He has written a poem called "Adversary is the Proof in the Court of Love." You know when you. And there's a court, court means Gerichtshof. Uh, 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 then the proof is when you have gone through, uh, 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 which is, uh, is, uh, uh, is, is given. Um, so in the court of love, the, the Gerichtshof der Liebe, there is something which proves that you are a bona fide person. It's that you have gone through adversary. This is, this is uh, uh, heavy, and he writes very beautifully. It's, it's very beautiful. Uh, I have heard it only. I cannot say it in poetic word. I, I say it in the name of Rosa. Rosa, yes. When the housewife takes the carpet out, hangs it on the <coughs> Stange, <laughs> and beats it. I hear the sound. <laughs> Does the housewife hate the carpet? <laughs> no, she's just taking out the dust and dirt, uh, which is good for the carpet. The carpet is brilliant afterwards. <laughs> Sufi poesy, it's a very practical. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hate me, God? <laughs> Is your bitter mercy wrong? No, he loves you more. In the eleventh canto, Yudhishthira is asking about this, this thing from Krishna. Uh, why are you sometimes doing this to everybody? Why did you do it for us? He, he wanted to say. We, we were, bent and went to the forest, we lost everything. Why? Shiva is so kind to his devotees. No, he gives them money and success. And you? And Krishna said, uh, if I give special mercy, the second mercy is special mercy. The first is uh, general mercy, this is special mercy. <coughs> then I take things away from my devotee so that he can only take shelter in me. This subject, which I believe is, is going through the mind of all spiritual and religious people, why suffering in my life, no? uh, mm -hmm. is very nicely discussed in the first canto of the Bhagavatam, a ninth chapter. There you will find the emperor of the world, Dhammaraj, in tears. He's broken. <coughs> the most ferocious war which mankind had ever seen has just uh, wiped out a good part of the aristocratic civilization of the ancient times. It's clear now the whole world needs to be redefined. Uh, new territories need to be ascribed. It's, it's just a storm which felled all the trees of the ancient world. And it happened because of Yudhishthira becoming the emperor. He was supposed now to sit on a throne governing a world which was drenched in blood. And he couldn't do it. He, his ethical standards, his own understandings in life forbade him. He was 
he, <coughs> he was confused. At that time, the Lord did not talk to him himself <coughs> because he, he wanted to give an ex he, he didn't want to speak about his bitter time, why he does bitter mercy. He wanted others to enlighten him. Maybe he thought, well, I'm doing this to you, the Shira, and now I cannot defend myself. Let, let someone else speak on my behalf. So he took Yudhishthira to Grandfather Bhishma, who was lying there on the battlefield, pierced by 64 arrows, invading his hour of departure from this world. And uh, Bhishma, a great personality, saw Yudhishthira and started to cry. He said, Yudhishthira was with all his brothers, four brothers, and Bhishma now expresses his inability to understand why they had to go through all this suffering. Before and now, before the Kurukshetra episode and, and so on, he said, O oh, sons of Dharma, Alas! How painful it is. How unjust. You have always taken shelter of Brahmanas. You have taken shelter of Dharma. You have taken shelter of Achuta, the Lord. You do not deserve to live in such a miserable you just don't deserve it. Why are you suffering? You're so good. You're such good devotees and you're suffering. Oh no. Bhishma himself for a moment <coughs> cannot understand this. Now Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur writes a beautiful purport where he deals with this difficult question of the bitter mercy. He says, First of all, inquiry is necessary. So let's inquire why they are suffering. Does God want to give us suffering? Does he want to do this? Second is, does God, possibility, does, or does God maybe want to give us joy? Or does God want to give us suffering and joy mixed together? I want to acquire this. I want to find out. Bishma doesn't know. So now let's, uh, let's, let's be analytical. So he says, no, the first option that God <coughs> wants to give suffering to the devotees cannot be because he is affectionate to devotees. He has given, he has spoken about this in the Gita. <laughs> he doesn't break such words. And he has shown it over there. But okay, then let us see, does God want to give joy to us, his devotees? And he says, no. <laughs> we don't see this happening. <laughs> All around our life is not full of joy. We have to say this very honestly. Okay, third option. Does God want to give us a mixture of uh, what was it? suffering and joy? And he says, no, that also cannot be. Because it would contradict his kind nature. You know, if I invite uh, uh, Jai Gopal, and I happen to know that he likes sweet rice. Now imagine, uh, I would say, okay, Jai Gopal, I give you sweet rice, but <coughs> mixed with uh, sand, and I don't tell you. <laughs> Jai Gopal comes, Guru Maharaj. You invited me for a feast. Yes, Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the sweet rice. <laughs> Jaguar <Jai> said, <laughs> What is this? A mixture is very painful. You know, if you ever have, I don't know, in India you can have sweet rice. He said, Yeah, I don't know if it's available. <laughs> But it's really disappointing, you know, it's really so because you can't enjoy it and it, 
it, it, it, it, it's, it's painful for the teeth, which you need to crack the sweet knife. Mm -hmm. And you go on the you munch on the sand, it's very bad. So it cannot be like this. So my final conclusion is that no one can solve this problem by inquiry. You cannot find out a good solution. Then the text goes back to Bhishma. How does Bhishma deal with this? Bhishma says, all I can say, it must be a plan of the Lord that you're suffering like this. And he must have his, his idea, his reason. And he says, it must be good because Krishna no one, we cannot observe that Krishna changes his mind, he cannot be influenced by anyone, nor does he change his actions, which are always good. He is, also Krishna is impartial, he doesn't make anyone his enemy, uh, he's the soul of all, <coughs> he is without a second, and very important, he is free from pride and free from sins. So, Prito Maharaj expresses this very nice. You are like a father. Just as a father on his own accord looks after children, you personally always do what is best for us. The devotees pray like this, a beautiful prayer. My Lord, just like a father who always acts on his own accord. You, you, it's not that you, you have to write him or, or, or something. He takes the initiative on his own. Just like a father on his own accord looks after children, you personally always do what is best for us. Once again, my dear devotees, you can only see this and not rebel and protest when the bitter mercy comes, the purifying mercy, or the flaming mercy, the melting mercy, the correcting mercy, the deflating mercy, you can only understand this if you change your perspective. If you change from looking <coughs> at your life with your mind and putting yourself in the center uh, and you try to look from Krishna's perspective. Otherwise, it is not possible for a self-absorbed person, it's not possible to be happy with Lord Krishna's uh, bitter mercy or the second uh, mercy. <coughs> there is a verse about this which I very much like. <coughs> It's in the 29th chapter of the fourth canto, verse 69. 69, 69. Yeah. Krishna consciousness means to always be joyful. No, I'm not testing you, but you can't, and I will stop testing you. <laughs> Krishna consciousness means to constantly associate with the Supreme Personality of God in such a mental state that the devotee can observe the cosmic manifestation exactly as the Supreme Personality of God does. In simple English, he sees the world like God sees it. I want to give now an example how this how I became alert to this point. In, in the past, I would give uh, uh, share the seminar, seminars on death and dying. And uh, while I was doing this, uh, I was also at the universities with the seminars. It's a good subject. People uh, really appreciate uh, a bit sensitively presented. Um, uh, I remember I was in the Humboldt University in Berlin, very, very nice <coughs> building, and many good, famous thinkers have come out of it. I had a 
class of which was so full. People were so interested. They were, they were sitting on the floor, sitting on the tables. Some sat on each other's shoulder, but maybe they were the young couples, you know. Uh, it was so full. There is even a video recording on this somewhere. We recorded this. And uh, for the first time there, I presented something uh, on, see, uh, on getting out of self-absorption and losing fear of death. It was in this context. And I remember, I, 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 I think I cried, at least inside of me. I couldn't continue for some time, I remember this. Because for the first time I presented this, what I will present to you now, I won't cry, but it continues to move me. There was a time when Christian missionaries went to, the, to North Africa and stayed in, 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 amongst the Bedouins, the Arab people, to, to, to somehow serve them, you know, do good things to them, and, and ultimately they wanted to spread the heavy word of Christianity to them. So uh, there was one priest. So, yes, so the Muslim uh, population was worried. These Christian missionaries come, uh, and they want to convert our people. This is not good. And they, uh, they, uh, some uh, fundamental people began to kill uh, these missionaries. There was now this one priest who was found death, dead, uh, but next to him was a letter in his own, written in his own handwriting, which is very beautiful. He said, said I'm, I've heard of the uh, uh, reaction of the, of the Islamic people to our attempts to spread Christianity, and I've heard that many of, that some of my brothers have met uh, their death from these fundamentalists. I feel that also something in this area will happen. Then he writes the actual letter. He says, when my murderer comes, I want to see him as the friend, my friend of my last hour. I want to see him, my Lord, in the same way which you would see him. You would see him as one of your creatures, or one of your, as one of your children. Please help me at this time, which will be difficult for me, when he will come and you know, kill me, uh, to see him like you, our, all of our heavenly, you, our heavenly Father. <laughs> he, he must have the switch from a position of self-absorption to let us see how the Lord sees. The Lord is not happy about this when the, his children kill each other. He must feel great pain in his heart that uh, one child or one brother kills the other brother. Uh, let me see it like this and forgive my brother uh, who's still my brother. Uh, very, uh, very wise man. Very wise man. Uh, so I don't, uh, I don't want to leave you now with something impractical. I don't want to say get out of self-absorption. Then you will understand. Uh, uh, come to the turning point where you see what Krishna does is very good for you. It may not be possible for all of us so quickly. We may not be long enough on the spiritual path or we may not have yet uh, uh, purified uh, us from selfish motivation. But there's something I would love to share with you. How something which each one of us can do to stop this danger of self-absorption or false uh, identification. And it is to do something for the benefit of others or do some compassionate work. Who is poor, I'm asking you? Or when are you poor? The answer is, he is poor who never gives 
in charity. <laughs> Listen, why? You might say, I, I have nothing to give in charity. I'm not a rich Swami like you. Um, I'm also not rich, by the way. Um, but yeah, somehow, by the mercy of all the Vaishnavas, I can do my service. I'm very grateful. We might say, I have nothing. Well, you have a face. You can give a kind smile to others. You have eyes. That is, you can look full of well wishes to others. You have a heart. That means you can start wishing well for others. Pray for them. And you have a tongue, no? You can speak kind words. You have a body and you can help others with the body. He who is poor who never gives in charity. If you give in charity, uh, uh, kindness, loving kindness and helping others, then you are truly a rich man. And do you know a secret? Devotion is there in each one of you. Otherwise you wouldn't be on the Bhakti path. It's the first mercy you have all received, that sweet first installment. Mm, devotion is, Bhakti Ranaka says, but do you know how to ah, assess it? Weißt du, wie du den Zugang zu dieser, diesem Investment and Hingabe kriegst? Listen very carefully to this wonderful verse, which is so ecstatic. I, I like it so much. It says, devotion is the property of all devotees, but it becomes only available to them when they assist another person in getting devotion. You have Krishna consciousness, but the moment you share it, it becomes assessed by you. Do you know this word assessed? It's been so English. You can get it. And you all know it. When you are in your homes, when you are at your working place, when you are at st the studies, and people <coughs> ask you the question, and you begin to explain it, they go, wow, really? Then you feel, well, this is good. This Krishna consciousness is very good. At least they think. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and it increases in you. Every one of us knows the bliss which happens when we share Krishna consciousness with others. Every one of us knows that in a certain situation we do the switch from self-absorption, we do something for the benefit of others. It's something which you can feel like you feel when you run in a wall with your eyes closed. Boom, boom, boom. There was a, there was something. And you oh yeah, there was a wall. <laughs> it's absolutely tangible, Kaifa. Mm -hmm. For for everyone. It's not a, a, a theory. So by this you can access the first, I would say, the second type of mercy, you can understand and appreciate and love when you have uh, made good use of the first installment of mercy, the bhakti. And that bhakti can be assessed, can be made available to you when you share it. So, now I will do something which is unconventional. I will request you to turn around to a partner and I will be the Madhijis, please look around, find another Madhiji just next to you. It can be anyone really. The Prabhus, I mean, if the married couples want to be uh, uh, in the marriage discussion, uh, 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 so you please find someone. Nimai, have you found someone? Yes. Now this is not something unimportant. This is most important. They don't think, oh yeah, this is a new age stuff. It is very Krishna conscious. Very Krishna conscious, you will see. It's called Sadhu Sangha. Hmm? You have the letter so. Who of you has not found a neighbor? Please raise your hand and look around. Then you will find uh, someone. 
Franke ist da der andere Nägel. Franke, du kannst dann zu mir kommen. Du hast, du hast, you need a neighbor. You have, yes, yes, yes. Maldives, everyone found someone? An Arirada? Yes. What? The, now the question comes. Uh, yes. Don't, don't help me. Du hast keinen. Ja. Oder du kannst auch in eine Dreiergruppe gehen, wenn, wenn das einfacher ist. Hm. Here is the question. We heard about two types of divine intervention in our life. The sweet mercy, the bitter mercy. Uh, share with your partner what you can learn from this mm, uh, for your practical life. I want to allow me to just say something. We, there is a problem which lecture givers have and which I'm very, very aware of. Uh, when you say something, it is not guaranteed that the other ones, one hears it. It's not guaranteed. When the other one hears something, it's not guaranteed that he has understood what you said. When someone has understood what you said, it's not guaranteed that he is, has agreed with what you said. And if someone has agreed even, oh yes, this was a point, it's not guaranteed that he will apply it in his life. And it's only at this very last link in the chain, or this, this last bindiglied in the kette, where, where something happens in your life. You all, or we all, suffer from an overdosis of hearing, but we have not really listened. <laughs> we have not maybe understood, and we have not agreed with it. And we have also not applied it. We have not gone all the way in the chain uh, uh, to the last glee, the last link, which is the most important. So I would like that you share what have you understood and agreed in the lecture. You don't have to agree with any. With, with, I hope there's one point you can agree with. Um, and then how can you apply it in 2000? How can you apply it in the year 2016? Please, sir. Hare Krishna. Thank you very, very much for discussing these important points. Mm, I think uh, really that in this discussion, uh, it's an ongoing discussion because we all deal at certain times in our life with the sweet aspects of Krishna's mercy. Mm, uh, and then when he, he comes and gives us needs, need, <laughs> then it's our chance to really come to the turning point. Mm. Therefore, this type of mercy is described as Krishna's special mercy. It's, it's, it's a given, um, it's a special thing. And it encourages us to come to the turning point. Mm. The turning point comes in the devotee's life where he consciously chooses at the crossroads of life to please Krishna, to serve Krishna. Uh, first and foremost to think of Krishna. And uh, it is here where he will uh, come to a type of transcendental uh, absorption in Krishna consciousness which gives him a happiness which just cannot be understood in this world. So much so that people who are externally 
even suffering, devotees who are suffering, they are, <laughs> they are bliss. I remember Prabhupada in his last days in, in, in this relationship. Anyways, I hope this was helpful for you. Please explore the subject more, discuss it with your uh, friends. I noticed some of the discussions were really involved, uh, was going back and forth and and uh, seemed you got something from your partner, some new understanding. Mm -hmm. I would like, because today is a big day, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if and we have, I have gone 15 minutes over time, I would like to end here uh, and not answer questions. I think if we have <coughs> participated really honestly in the sharing exercise, um, a lot, uh, some benefit could be there. If you have not yet found the inner courage, um, or maybe you are a little tired and hungry and you couldn't really grasp it so well, um, I suggest you to discuss. What I would like to leave you with is a thought. Um, do something for the benefit of others and you will be benefited. Please don't think that you are now in a position where you need the care of the world. Um, that may come, hopefully, uh, but uh, care for others and you will see a new door opening in your life and I believe if we can do this it's very nice. We had yesterday a wonderful discussion with uh, devotees from this project and elders and it's, uh, it was very moving for me to see how the devotees expressed their desire to serve all of you even in a better way. They want to build better facilities for you. And I could understand <coughs> see the spirit uh, of the Goloka Dhamis to take more care of you, that is, their guests. And uh, uh, while we did this discussion, we felt really happy in Krishna consciousness. Mm. And uh, yeah, please allow us to serve you more. Mm. I will uh, tomorrow speak about some of our plans here and uh, I think you will like them and we'll see how that you that you please come more often and join us more often here. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now it's Gora Haris. Uh, you will announce something to us? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Krishna, I have different type of announcement this morning. Some good one, some medium one, and some bad one. <laughs> I will start with the bad one. Uh, the Samadhi Dance Company, who were scheduled to come today to perform, had to cancel their coming. They were getting a lot, lot of obstacles in their way to come to Gorokadam, car breaking downs, and many other things. And they are really sorry that they cannot come and perform. There will be photos of you who will be for Radharashmelo, they will be there. They have prepared actually a special dance to do that here in Gorukadam and I felt it was extremely empowered uh, presentation, but they will do that same presentation in Radhadesh for the Radhadeshmelo. So yeah, that's the, the bad news. Okay, middle news. <laughs> <laughs> All of you who need picking up service. Uh, uh, we have, I think, only two picking, uh, two picking up, not picking up, bringing away, because actually we are already on the last day, so tomorrow many of you will go back to your, your places. Please all approach Vadim. Vadim, please stand up. Vadim will try to coordinate all of you driving. Even if you already informed us about uh, uh, driving services previously, just go still to Vadim and double check that you are really there and he will try to, to organize everything. <coughs> okay, good news. <laughs> Here we have a beautiful calendar <laughs> that we have made this year. This is full with beautiful pictures of Radha Mohan, the best darshan of last year. 
with all the ecology and all the, the dates. So if you uh, don't have anything yet for the next year, please you can go to our temple shop. We actually we printed a little too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we want to show them. They yeah, were that one. is in the outfit of a bumblebee. That is so very so amazing. There is an amazing. Uh, the swan boat is there. Yeah. I think it comes. I saw it yesterday. No, I think it did. That is the swan. That's the swan. Uh, but but uh, I think it's the end. You will faint when you see it. Yeah. That will be out. <laughs> we we have them actually in German and in English, and they are beautiful meditations also inside. Really <coughs> good news. <laughs> <laughs> and the last uh, or oh, another good news. Pizzeria will be open the entire evening. <laughs> <laughs> and fi finally, uh, today is our day of Kirtan. Uh, yeah. Starting at 11 o'clock this morning, up to 5 o'clock this afternoon. That means 8 hours. 8 hours Kirtan. If I'm good in mathematics. So we will start at 11 o'clock. Please all try to come as much as possible for the Kirtan. We are speaking about transformation. We are speaking about a new step into another life. Actually, this Kirtan is really what will bring us to the other dimension. That we have really excellent singers. We have a team that can be right now from Haladesh and will be there also to uh, support the, the Kirtan. We have Shyamali, our new uh, uh, Kirtanya, uh, very young but very, very good, who will also sing. I just would like to end, I think it's maybe like seven years ago, we were in, uh, in the New York with my spiritual master and we, we were staying in the ashram and it was just the time to go out for preaching uh, service. So we went to the temple. Maharaj wanted to offer his obeisances and get blessings before we will go to do the preaching service. And there were two Brahmachari walking up and down the temple chanting Japa. And then Maharaj looked at them and said, May the Lord hear your prayer. And they were shocked. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm supposed to pray while I chant. <laughs> that, that was like, like a, and that struck me as well. So sometimes when we spend a lot of hours in the kirtan, we, we might get a little bit uh, dead with our mind. Like the, the prayer, actually the prayer is what will help us to go through all those hours of kirtan in a very good way. And the prayer for us is really getting more taste, getting a new spiritual life. <coughs> Thank you very much. There will be a schedule of the kirtans very soon posted on the temple door. And that's our last day for 2015. <laughs> 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 we, we, we can give all we have uh, today. Thank you. <laughs>